you, you gave a good example for a two hundred thousand dollar home before, and it's pretty interesting because one of my friends specifically asked the question. He's getting ready to move into a house with his wife. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going to read it for Beto. Okay. Is it better to put down as little or as much as possible? What is a good down payment for a two hundred thousand dollar home or house? I'll uh, put my input on it, then I'll uh, ask what your view is as a realtor. Okay. But I will say, uh, generally speaking, uh, what Tamiko said as far as your credit is going to have a huge influence because obviously that's going to determine your interest rate. But I'm outside of that, assuming that you are trying to line that up, you got to keep in mind that the bigger your down payment is, the less your monthly expense is going to be for your mortgage. And you want to take that in consideration. And you also want to keep in mind that if your down payment is less than 20%, you're probably going to end up, end up paying a PMI insurance, which is just an additional fee that no one wants to pay. So you want to probably make sure if you can, that it's higher than 20%. So in your particular case, a $200,000 home, that would be $40,000. That's just some things to take into consideration. But um, Tamika, what's your um, response to that question? I agree with that. And that's that's such a good question because it can vary. And, and I like uh, your point as to it depends on what the down payment is. If you're just looking to say, I just want to maybe throw a, another couple of thousand dollars on it. I mean, yeah, that's great because as Elijah mentioned, um, you will go into the home owing less. You know, the more you put down, the less your loan amount. And that's awesome. However, you also want to talk to your real estate agent. Um, if you just have, let me put it this way. If you have the money and that's what you want it to use it for, I think, hey, use it for the reason that you want. But also talk to your loan officer like, hey, Mr. Loan Officer, I'm going to, you know, put this much more money down and what's my payment going to be? You know, and then if they talk to you and your payment's 450, this is just play numbers because you know your house payment is not going to be 450. Let me just say 1750. Just let's make it more realistic. So my house payment is going to be 1750. That's my mortgage payment. And then you go back to him and you, you're putting more money down and your house payments are only going to be now like 1745. You know, like make sure the numbers make sense um, depending on that. But I, I do think that if you do you know, the 20%, that's great because as he mentioned, you're now not having to pay that mortgage insurance premium, which is great. Um, and, you know, I know that mortgage insurance premium isn't a lot, but that's still an extra, you know, included on your mortgage payment. So I would say that, you know, for one, sit down with your mortgage person, figure out how much more you're putting down, figure out if the numbers make sense in terms of if you're just doing it because you're trying to make your mortgage payment lower. Um, or if you are really doing it from a mortgage insurance uh, premium perspective, because if you're doing it because of that, I think that's a more valid reason than maybe the payment. Um, and you have to, you need to make sure it's a substantial amount in order to even make your payment bud, bud, budge. So um, yeah, that's my stance on it. I would say it depends on why they're wanting to do it. Most people do it because of the mortgage insurance premium. But then I do run into other people they are doing it because they want their payment to be lower. And I, I just tell them, hey, see how much lower it's going to be or keep that money in your pocket. And you can just make an extra payment <laughs> toward your principal only, you know, so it just really depends. Right. Mm -hmm. um, a, a pretty popular rule of thumb is uh, having your mortgage be 25 percent or less of your income. And if uh, it's higher than that, then maybe you need to focus on making more money. That, that's just like a thought for the audience. to, Because uh -huh. uh -huh. um, otherwise, you're one like emergency away from not being able to pay it. And you know, we don't want that. Never. I always tell people that's why when I when I, I kind of cringe when people are wanting to stay at a certain amount because they know what their budget is. And you have agents that know they're at the max, you know, and for whatever reason, they're wanting to push that. Yeah, you want to make sure you're not, I tell people, you don't want to ever live for your house. You know, you want to make sure you're living your life and enjoying it, but you don't want to, you know, live and work only because you're paying this mortgage, because then you're going to get really frustrated. And you have to keep in mind that sometimes taxes increase and you know, values increase and insurance increases. So you still have those expenses. And if those increase, then that means your mortgage payment is, you know, a little bit more if you escrow. And even if you don't escrow, um, 
you're still having to pay that, you know, payment per year. So yeah, don't live for a house. <laughs> Make sure you're you're budgeting and being smart. 